Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and uh, today there is a new product from Sonoff that I want to show you this little white thing which uh, you might think it's uh, it's familiar because I reviewed this product and uh, I sort of did because uh, it is a micro but as you can see from the orange packaging it is a Zigbee micro so we had this very same device in a very same packaging I think it was the exact same package a couple of years ago and it is a device which plugs into USB and then it has a USB socket a USB a socket and you can use the EV link application to turn this on and off so if you have a 5 volt device that you want to control using Sonoff now you can do this you don't need a Zigbee um, so you don't need a, a basic which is a you know much barkier one which uh, switches mains voltage but you can use this uh, very small device so if you have uh, requirements for you know you want to control when your phone charges maybe you want to you know disconnect it in the evening after it you know fully charges then you can just use this device uh, use it between your phone and your charger to control the 5 volt output so as you can see here oops it is like this so as i said it has a 5 volt uh, well a usb a plug and then it has a usb a socket on the other hand and on the only other thing it has it has a button so you can control it by using this button there are a couple of holes for some very faint uh, status leds and you know qr code to add it to EV link application and yeah that's it and you know it just says zigbee that sort of stuff ah yeah you can't focus for some reason this thingy is just sticking out uh, at the back but the difference is not only the communication so as i said the earlier model was wi-fi and this one is zigbee and if i remember correctly the criticism uh, uh, for the old uh, micro was that it only connected the ground and the 5 volt uh, uh, between the usb port and not the data but this device definitely does that so it says on the other side that it supports anything from 5 to 22 volts so that means that it would allow your fast charger to communicate through your device so it would allow all the fast charging standards if you're using a pd charger or anything like that and i just tried this by plugging this into the phone and plugging a usb device on the other end and it was recognized so it's definitely allowing the uh you know the usb signals to pass through so you can really use this to charge you know phones that use fast chargers and you will allow the you know the fast charger handshake to go through and probably in the last comment that even though it allows the uh, the communication to go through when you push the button and you you know disconnect the device or turn off the device it doesn't break the communication like so it would you know stop charging but if you have anything else connected to it which is using the data lines for communication that will be still be connected so i was just uh well i just had this flipper zero lying around so i connected the flipper zero uh, through this uh, usb switch or this uh, zigbee micro and uh, when i turn it on then the device charges and then communicates and when i turn it off the communication is still going on but the charging function is disabled so it looks like that it's disconnecting the 5 volts and the ground or only the 5 volts but then keeps the data lines uh, you know connected between the the plug and the socket side of the usb micro okay cool so in the rest of the video i'm going to show you how it works uh, with the ns panel pro but i also tried it with the ihost and it worked just fine i also pulled out one of my old tuya zigbee gateways and i connected to that and it works with a little bit of quirks because it appears as a two channel device but it still works and i can turn it on and off so it works for two as well and finally i connected to my zigbee to mqtt gateway as well and uh, even though it was showing that it's not supported it you know brought up the small picture of this and i was able to control it on and off uh, so it even works from zigbee to mqtt as well and by the way if you are interested in this device it's already available so it is 1290 from the uh, son of store and of course if you want this i would have the link in the video description okay as a first test i'm going to test it with my uh, son of well obviously son of but uh, the NS Panel Pro. So I have uh, set this up with the NS Panel Pro. I mean, it was really easy. As soon as I just plugged in, I was able to 
come here, add device, and then start the pairing. And this device was found in a couple of seconds. So that was working fine. And then it is oops, now added to my list of devices. So you can see I named it as Zigbee Micro and it is working and I can turn it on and off. And by the way, probably you can see that there is this guy plugged into it. So it's drawing 1.7 uh, um, watts, sorry, yeah. And if I turn it off, then uh, it drops to zero. And uh, because it's only switching five volts, there is no relay inside. So there is no click, it's absolutely silent and now it comes back on and the power consumption goes up and of course I can use this button as well. So now it's off. Now it is back on and let me show you how it works in the EV link app. So you can see that uh, it is a Zigbee micro. Uh, yeah, I can turn it on and off from here as well. Oops. Uh, and now it's off. I think there was a delay and now it is back on. Okay. So there was an initial delay for some reason. And I can create the usual schedules and multiple schedules and I can create timers uh, from this application. I can also create a loop timer. Um, yeah, here. And uh, yeah, in, within the options, I don't really have a lot of things. Yeah, I have logs. I have pilot features. I can increase the signal strength of this. There is a power on state. There is an inching setting. So if you want to use it for, uh, you know, just a, a, a short turn on or turn off, you can use that as well. Um, yeah, I mean, these are, you know, good functions. Uh, probably some of them are not as, you know, useful for this uh, small USB device, but these are the standard features that we get, you get with all sort of like Sonoff outputs. So this is working fine. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, disconnect this and sort of delete it as a device because I want to add it to my uh, iHost as well. So see how it works on the iHost. So I'm going to delete it from here. Okay, now it has disappeared and I think I'm checking if I can see. So there is a very faint LED and with this uh, studio lights, I can't really see anything happening. But what I'm going to do is I'm trying to set it up with my iHost. So let me just uh, shorten, make the screen a little bit shorter, so smaller, so you can see the whole thing. Uh, yeah, that should do it. And then on the devices and add Zigbee device and then start the pairing. And uh, so, yeah, I'm hoping that by, because I have deleted it from the device, it will go into, um, setup mode or pairing mode automatically and it did uh, yeah it says it's a zigbee outlet uh, zigbee micro so i'm just going to call it zigbee micro and then save and then it is successfully added uh, i'm hoping uh, it has been added yep see all devices and it is here oh it's a router device <clears throat> okay that's good to know and well it's it was already on so now it is on and yep by the you can see it's on because it's drawing 1.5 what uh, yeah 1.9 watts and if i turn it off then now it's off yeah it is working from the ihost without any issues what else we can see here yeah zigbee micro uh, big button location Okay, strong RSSI, that's good. And yeah, there is nothing else here, but um, that's how all the other devices look like. Uh, Sane, Zigbee Micro, yeah. And I think I can use it in different scenes as well. So if I want to add a scene, I can create a um, you know smart device if the Zigbee Micro is turned on and off. Yep. Or I can also use it in actions to turn it on and off. Not the iHost. Yep, standard functionality, but it supports it. Everything works, so I'm happy. Let me delete from the, uh, let me delete the Zigbee Micro from here as well, because I think next we are going to see how it works in Tuya. Okay, we are in the Tuya app, and I just need to find my switch. It's uh, this Blitzwolf IS1 and add sub device 
it is blinking already and let's see if I can find this into ya. I'm just hoping that if it works for, oh uh, yeah, it works. Uh, it appears with this strange uh, Chinese characters. So let's call it Zigbee Micro. Done. Wait for the interface. Oh, that's interesting. Why it is appearing as a two? Well, the first one is working. Uh, you can't see because uh, yeah, I can see it now draws 1.9 watts. And if I turn it on, let me remove this so it helps with the white balance. Uh, yeah, and I have no idea. So it appears as a uh, two switch device, but uh, both of them operates the uh, the output. So I'm not really sure what's the uh, what's the deal with this. Why it is appearing as a you know like a dual device, but. Um, Regardless, it works. It has, you know, all the features you can, you know, you can even do timers here for, you know, switch one and the switch two. So it has all the functionality. It just, uh, it's just strange that it appears as a two channel device, but at least it works. Maybe the uh, behavior is going to be slightly similar if you s use a, a different Zigbee hub. I mean, this Blitzwolf IS one is a fairly old one. But I'm not really sure, like you know, whether the it's the the hub that makes a difference to the Zigbee behavior or something else. But it definitely works, and you can use it. Yeah. So I think the next what I want to do, well, remove the device, disconnect and wipe data. Is I want to use it in uh, Zigbee to MQTT as well. Okay. So here we are, and I'm just going to enable joining and. Uh, in the previous instances, the uh, the device was already in uh, pairing mode, so I'm hoping that. Hmm. Okay. So it is a fairly new device, even though it doesn't really do anything different from any other devices. But it looks like that it is not. I mean, it's strange that it it even has the icons and everything, but it says that it's not su supported. But it looks like it works. Yeah, it works. I can turn it on. And now my device is definitely on. So you can see it draws 1.9 watts just as before. And if I turn it off, then now it's on. Off, sorry. Uh, so yeah, it definitely works. So I, I'm <laughs> not really sure why it says not supported. Um, uh, even though it still works. I mean, we are not really getting any more information on this device, but this is not a battery device, so I'm not expecting, uh, you know, battery status. Probably the only thing which is not working, let me just do this. No, because sometimes what I notice that for some devices, the uh, controlling the device would work, but when you want to query the state, it would not work. And um, this one seems to be working just fine even though uh, it is reporting that it's not supported. So I think I'm just going to leave it like this because uh, it is definitely working. And um, yeah, it's, I mean, I just have no issues with that. Um, so yeah, on and off works. Um, the, I can, you know, if I go to the list of devices, I can, I can see it, I can see the single st strength and probably even if I go to the map, uh, it would be able to load it in the map and show that device is uh, working. So in the iHost, it was saying that it is a router. So let's see what uh, Zigbee to MQTT has to say anything about that. Okay, it took a while because I do have some devices that are not <laughs> not plugged in at the moment, like this guy here. Uh, yeah, but uh, you can see the micro here and it is definitely showing as a router because it's blue and it has all sorts of connections to other devices. So uh, um, yeah, it appears as a router. It appears as a power device. I can query the status. I can turn it on and off and uh, it is working just fine. And uh, my Zigbee to MQTT is probably a couple of months old. I haven't really updated and, um, but still it supports it. So I'm sure that if I would update it, then it would actually say that this is, you know, a son off, but 
even with the current state it is working. So I'm happy and I think I'm going to use it like this. So I think that will be my review of the new son of Zigbee Micro. If you are interested in this little device, you will find purchasing links in the video description. But I think that should be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video.